What's up guys? Jeff Falkenberry, Endless Season Guide Service, Truman Lake Fishing Intel. My buddy Tyler Mahoney out here today. Um, we're gonna chase some crappies. Late summertime, it's the end of July, 1st of August. Hot, 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 hot. It's been <laughs> triple digits for two weeks. Dry, but uh, it's a really good time to get out on Truman Lake and catch some of these crappie that are staging on structure. We're going to chase some deeper fish today, 20-some feet of water. We're going to use the Lowrance Active Target up on the nose. And we've got some super cool things to show you. So come on and go with us. See how we end up. All right, Tyler, our first spot here. I have not even put a line in the water. I dropped the trolling motor down. This is the new Lowrance Active Target. Um, of course, the fad of live fishing is really getting huge and every electronics company is coming out with their own version. And I've been running this a little bit and I really, really like it. You can see this tree right here. You can see there's three or four fish right there. I'm gonna try to come in there see my bait fall and I'm gonna try to start with the top one because I don't want to spook the rest of them here he comes Ooh, I missed him we're gonna go back after him again I don't want to get down deep in there I see numerous fish in there I see him chasing that around right there bring it up keep chasing me keep chasing me sometimes boy they'll do that Ten and a half inch Truman Lake crappie. We're gonna toss them back today. The bait we're using here is a uh, Jellyfish USA crappie bomb, and we just hook a minnow on there. What that does is when you hang on a, a limb, you know, a lot of times in the summertime you're fishing a lot of cedar trees. When you hang on a limb, that heavy spoon weighs about a quarter of an ounce, probably. That heavy spoon helps it fall right off of that tree branch. Here we go. We're going to catch this guy right here. We're going to be all up in his grill. You can see my bait right there and you can see that here he, he turned. Now I'm going to, oh gosh darn it. I'm antsy. Now is that a bunch of shad? Shad. Or? Yep. Those are shad. A cloud of shad coming in right there. They're still Uh, just a handful of fish. I get lined out here. I'll show you. There's still just a handful of fish that I can see right in here, moving around about behind them limbs. You get out. Time on the water with this kind of stuff is is really what's crucial because you start learning what's a crappie and and what's a carp. And there's a crappie coming up right there. I'll try to drag him high off that tree if I can. He looks like a little one. trying to pick on him there you can see my bait coming down to him right there get him out here he comes get him out off of that tree you can see he goes right back in there this technology is pretty incredible you can see all these fish right here these fish aren't hugely aggressive they're not hugely aggressive at all and you know there's a lot that can play factors into that they, it's cloudy today um like i said it's been 100 degrees for two weeks it seems like and we've had some weather move in and uh we've got some wind we've got clouds a uh, little bit of rain moved through big temperature drop we were hot 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 yesterday and today we're in a low 70s so it might be a little finicky but we're still gonna catch a nice limit of crappie, I'm sure. 
Oh, uh, we're actually on a point. They're running some water at the dam and uh, pulling water down through here. And these fish will stage on structure out on these points when they're doing that. They'll get in this. There's not a lot of current. There will be here after a while because they've been running a little more water later in the morning. And these fish will even get tighter to these trees and bunch up even in bigger bunches. And uh, but mainly right now we're on points where in this this tree right here is submerged, but it's in 26 feet of water, and all these fish are eight or nine feet down. And that's what's nice about this kind of technology. I mean, it doesn't make them bite. You can see my bait right down in the middle, all them fish. Here he comes. Yeah, where's the bite button on that thing? Yeah, it doesn't make them bite, but it lets me know what depth they are, how they're reacting. You know, if they're following a lot, if they're following slow, if they're following fast. I haven't been over here. These aren't some fish that we've pre-fished. I haven't been over here in a week or anything. This this whole video was on a whim. Tyler and I was talking about it and said, let's just go over. You know, we're going to try to find some fish and see if we can get some caught. It's not like a pre-staged, we know where they're at type deal. Get my tail that time. That fish is about three foot under the surface, I'm guessing. Three or four feet, 28.7 feet of water. Nice 10 and a half, 11 inch crappie. Another keeper. Bam! Tell you a little more of what we're working with here with the electronics game changing a bunch you know the rod and reel game has changed a bunch as well you know you're seeing guys using much longer fishing rods which you know when spider rigging got big people started using longer rods to get that bait out off of the trolling motor so he wasn't spooking fish but now they're getting that bait out off the trolling motor but they're holding it in their hand and they're getting way out there and dropping right on top of that um, so a lot of these rod companies started making some new kinds of rods. Um, my preferred rods are the Power Crappie, uh, Todd Huckabee rods out of Oklahoma. And um, what I'm using and what I really like to use is the Elite. That's what I'm using today. That's what Tyler's gonna use. Um, we also have the pulling rods. We've got the new Trident. If everything works out, we've got the new Ninja as well. And if the wind doesn't get up too bad and we get on the right fish, um, we might do a little bit of casting here after a while. So kind of excited for that. But this Elite, the pulling rod, um, two of my super duper favorites for what we're doing right here. Um, this, this is a 10-6, medium heavy, medium action, I'd say. It's just a really nice rod. I think the Giants raise up slow. He might be on it. It is a little guy. <laughs> <laughs> it is a little guy. I thought that's what it was. Check out that little baby. <laughs> he thumped it good though. You, we could watch that fish. You've seen Tyler's bait going down. And you'll see that fish sitting there. And then you'll see him go real quick one way or the other. And then he didn't quite feel him at first because he was only this long. And you can see him down there flailing around. Yep, I think he's on there. Mm -hmm. a little minute. We're going to get him on a good one here though. So here's a good keeper right here in the fork of this tree. Even if you're not catching them, this is just so much more fun in my opinion. It's pretty fun. There's a good keeper. Just, I mean, it is like playing a video game. Doubles! Another good keeper. <laughs> no, don't flop down those stairs. You're off close to doing it. Yep. <laughs> I just had to get a hold of him with the Gorilla Grips. Instead of trying to hold his mouth with my thumb, 
You get a grill at Crip on Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Two good, nice 10 inch crappie. They are. You can tell they're a little bit finicky. They're just, uh, you got to be right on them. Sometimes when you get on them, you can be four feet away and they really get after it. And then other times, boy, you better be on their nose. You know, sometimes you'll pull up to a tree and there'll be, you know, a big cloud of fish. And then other times there might be three fish. And you just never know. Like I said, the current this morning is not real strong yet, but it's gonna get that way when they really rev the dam up. And when they do, that's when the big clouds will show up. Right now there's just some few fish here, a few fish there. Now that the reason they do that in the current is that tree's kind of protecting them a little bit from the current. Yeah, they ambush bait. Um, a lot of folks think, and you know, we talk about this a lot in seminars and stuff, but a lot of folks think that you want to stay on the down current side of whatever you're fishing, that that fish is going to hide behind that and come out and get bait. And actually, it's the opposite. You want to fish the up current side. You want to be out away from the structure, let your bait flow into the tree, and you'll catch them 10 times better than you will fishing a down current side. Carp action, drum. Yeah, it could be carp, could be drum. And it, I mean, you can tell the difference in those fish, but I tell you, a gar facing right at you, uh, a big gar facing right at you, can look like a crappie. That's not now. See that? Yeah, we, see how long it got? Now that we got in a diff, got the boat in a different position, we got a different shine on him, and definitely not a crappie right here. Boom, thump city. Come on, baby. Oh! oh. <laughs> he, he, he ate it and sat there. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, double, double time! Keepers too. Double time. Mine might be a little close. You know what? Just for the sake of this show, because this we're trying to keep this as real and as transparent as possible. So what I want to do is I want to measure these fish. And I'm gonna say nine and a half. I'm gonna go eight on this one. Drop him in there. <laughs> nine and a half. Wow. <laughs> if that was yours, I think mine's gonna be just a touch bigger. Yeah, he's about 10, 10 and an eight. Oh, he's stuck out the bottom. So, I don't know if you can see that, but he's just at that 10 mark. We don't usually measure crappies. I'm um, guiding out here every day. You know, the middle of July, hot, hot, hot. Sometimes we try to get out early and get off early. So, you know, sometimes we'll keep some nine and a half, 10 inch fish, but typically on a trip, we don't, we try not to measure much. They're either a good solid keeper or we'll try to find a good solid keeper. So these are cedar trees along this edge right here. And then out here's a row of hardwoods and they're on a ledge off the channel. And that's kind of what we're chasing these current fish. It seems like these better fish are out here on these hardwoods, it seems to me like. The beauty of this live technology is fishing stuff that not everybody can see. You know, you pull up to a spot and you see some really good trees and you think, man, that looks like where he lives right there. Well, every single boat that went past that spot that day looked over there and said, man, that looks like where he lives right there. So when you can find that stuff that's not getting a lot of fishing pressure that's probably the greatest uh, attribute of this live technology is gonna say I see him sitting down there sitting down there sitting down there I, I haven't even been watching <laughs> freaking hey that's a stud up slow up slow keep going keep going I'll say he should have ate it toad yeah, 
<laughs> oh, the other one spooked. They both, I think, were coming at yeah, it. Yeah, they were. Nice catch. And that's the way I like them when there's just one or two on there. You yep. know, you can really zoom in on your target there. But you notice no matter what depth of water I'm in. I'm yeah, you keep it at 20. Anything. Yep. Just because I'm used to what that fish looks like at 10 and I'm used to what he looks like at 20. The best I, I explain to clients is the more consistent you are with something, you get more consistent the more you use it. Yep. And the more you change it, the less consistent you are. Is the best way I can right. do it. Oh yeah, boys. I was gonna say it looked like he was coming to chase. Oh yeah. Yeah. Keep coming. Keep coming. Easy, easy. Keep coming. Keep coming. Oh no. Oh, that's a big one too. <laughs> oh, he's coming back for it. Yeah, boy. Nice work. <laughs> I missed him. Dropped it right back on him. Nice work. Here he comes. <laughs> All right. That is fun stuff right there. Just let it keep falling past those others. Oh shit, they're gonna try it. Yep. Oh, I mean, it's, I mean, it's a good keeper. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I could. He was, I, he was on it no matter what. Like the line was completely slack. Yeah, they all took off when it went by. Oh, good question, kid. Oh, sure. <laughs> So we're sitting here pulling up to some trees. We've been fishing this all day. I've been pretty impressed with Lorance. Jeff, you never did run Garmin Live Scope. You've been out on the boat with Richard, but I mean, you've had this for a little while now. I mean, what's your experience with this Lorance? Uh, it, it's active target, correct? That's what they active call Active target, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, I've got to go out with some of my buddies that, that were running. Um, Garmin live scope and you know everybody's like oh which one's better which one's better and, you know I don't I can't really say that one's any better than the other I think it's very 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 similar um, the thing I will say is I feel like you know that the Lorance has an 18 degree beam on it and I feel like with that little bit narrower beam I'm not gonna say it's any more detailed but I will say that I'm for sure maybe a little closer to my target um, than I would be as a novice other brand user. Um, I think that for somebody that just buys it out of the box um, with the narrower beam, you're gonna be much closer to your target uh, without you know lots of practice. Now, an interesting thing <clears throat> that we were kind of talking about earlier that it's it depends on what school of thought you kind of like but you keep it on 20 foot of depth all the time no matter how deep you are yeah so i'm usually not going to be catching crappie under that 20 foot mark uh fishing wise you know i'm not going to be fishing over that deep so i leave it at, at a 20 foot down range and I leave it at 30 feet out. Uh, the only time I ever would play with my outrange is if I'm hunting down for some underwater structure and I need to shoot out a little further if I'm not seeing what I'm looking for. Um, but other than that, I leave it on that 20 foot down range. And the, the best I can explain is I, when I tell people, you know, anytime you practice with something or you use something, um, consistency is key. And uh, there's fish. And being more consistent, you know, there's four or five right there. Yep, I need to get out there a little further. Being uh, as consistent as you can and leaving it. There you go. 
Well, and the thing you talked about was once you get used to it on those settings, you kind of have a good judgment of what the size of the fish is. <clears throat> That's right, yeah. Whereas if you're fishing shallow water, you adjust the depth settings and you zoom in, the reference on the size of the fish kind of changes, so it's not necessarily uniform on how big that mark is. Right. More zoomed in. Yeah, because you don't want to be dropping on a bunch of little fish. I just started lifting a little and he was yep. just on. That's the ticket. Twenty six feet of water. Oh, there you go. junk but you know what it does exactly what it's designed to do it's designed to hold line and catch slab crappies look at you oh. got the microphone there look at that as I was going. Oh yeah. Get that. Come on. Let's find us one or two more and then we're gonna go get out of the sun. Yep, that sounds good to me. Starting to warm up. Yep. Can you get down in them? And just good 10 inch cropping. One right after another. <laughs> well guys that does it for us here today appreciate you watching been out with Master Captain Jeff Falkenberry of Endless Season Guide Service. Be sure to check him out if you want to book a trip on Truman Lake. Until next time, we'll catch you on the next one. <laughs>